Hey, Drew. Yeah. Happy 150th episode of Empire Radio. <laughs> Hey, you like that I didn't say boo 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 boo? I just pointed it. I think I might have said that a little too early. No, we can say it again right now, right after the, We'll say it no. again. <laughs> then I just switch, cut it, and switch it. Good do that. I can make a new intro right now after this and then stop it. Or I can just cut off the hay. Start with and you're breaking. Oh. Okay. Your mic get quiet. Huh? Oh, never mind. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to another Kenobi Tastic episode of Empire Radio. I'm Jeremiah. I'm Drew. And we are back. With episode seven of this game, um, that'd be crazy. But yes, we're back with more Kenobi. Hey, we don't know. There's always it could, tomorrow. It could <laughs> drop tomorrow. So that'd be crazy. But they what? Kept what would they do? <laughs> Qui Gon stuff, dude. That'd be so cool. Oh, just like a training montage. The whole that's it. Yeah. Damn. Yep. It's like Pop? set to like <laughs> to like the Rocky music. <laughs> He's, he's as long like, as he's wearing like like American flag shorts, I'd be done. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, anyway, yes. So you know, so like I said last, I think we announced this last week at the end of the episode, but we were doing yeah, those we top five Kenobi moments. Uh, so before the Kenobi series came out, people in Discord were like, "Hey, you should do two, top five Kenobi moments to mm-hmm. get ready for the Kenobi series." And I was like, ah, "I feel like there's, there could be at least." some stuff in there that we might consider for our top five or put them in our top five. So yeah. we're going to wait till after. So here we are. And so, and we know that people love our top fives as some of our, it seems like most of our outside of like show breakdowns, our top fives are always our most viewed uh, episodes. So we know the fans like it and send, if join a discord and send in some more top five ideas. Because those are always good topics when we need something to do for fun. So true. Top fives. I feel like people love them as well. So we yeah. Gotta, and we a couple people them. sent in their favorite Kenobi moments too. So mm-hmm. in the voice. Oh, section. the voice notes, which it worked. I asked that question last week. Yep. I thought we were hey. gonna get more, but that's fine. Hey, but we got some. We good, got we got a couple. Got and some I good think answers. That might be something we could do. Going forward, if we know the topic, maybe give a little quick thing at the end. Yeah. And maybe you guys can participate more that way via voicemail. So, all right. I, it's feel like it has been forever, Jeremiah, since I've seen you, but it hasn't been. It's but been it feels like, like it. Like three days. Saturday was when we recorded, so three days ish. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And so. it's, we're, we'll say it right now so that it doesn't get lost again, but. Um, there is not a fresh episode next week. Right. The week of 4th um, of July, we're taking yes. it off. Drew's going to be out of town kind of yes. like the day before we would record normally. So he's like, I don't got time to prepare for anything. So you guys got spoiled with like all those extra episodes during True. Memorial weekend. So we're ahead of the game anyway. Well, and you know what? I know a lot of you guys probably haven't caught up on all those episodes. So your Tuesday night or your Wednesday, whenever you listen to this, go back and listen to one of those three episodes because the viewership tells us that you guys didn't catch them all. So go go true. back and go listen to some of those ones you guys may have missed. It's like, um, we encourage you guys to do that. It's like the two fir- first two episodes of Kenobi are like way high. Yeah. And then the two trailer breakdowns went way down and then yeah. episode three went way, <laughs> way high again. So it's Come on. Like, we put a lot of time and effort in those true. Oh, dude, that trailer breakdowns. Was nuts. So go back, go listen to those. And I love that we're doing our top five tonight of Kenobi after this thing just ended. It feels fresh still. Yeah. Kenobi's still a big topic. I'm wearing my Anakin Kenobi shirt tonight. And if you guys are just listening to it, go go watch it on YouTube real quick and just catch that. I'm pumped. I had yeah. a fun time making my top this five was, list. This was hard for me because um, there's so much Kenobi stuff in the Clone Wars 
like I know I'm forgetting stuff. I even like went in Discord like, hey, remind me of some Clone yeah, Wars I stuff. I didn't. I don't think I have anything from oh, Clone Wars. Gosh. I know you're. It's all from A New Hope, probably, because that's Actually, like none of it's from A New Hope. What? Yeah. Dang. I don't think so. I'll double that's, check, but I don't think so. I thought like you were gonna have. You know, these are not the droids you're looking for. The the Vader fight when he sacrifices his life to let Luke see him die, become a to pass on person. the the lightsaber, not to baton, but to the lightsaber. Um, but yeah, it was hard for me because there's there's so much Kenobi stuff, and it was hard like trying to figure out like why something was I liked more than others because. I don't know. There's a lot of like great moments, and most of them have to do with like a lightsaber. <laughs> so, um, but it is. Hot. But you said it was was it easy or hard for you? For uh, life. not gonna lie, I made it like an hour before this oh, podcast. Gosh. So, gosh. classic, but, Drew. classic Drew. Classic. Hey, but they're written down. First of all, okay, chill. They're but what? Also, they're written down. I oh, have them. Okay. On my notes. But I think the biggest thing about it, too, but these are all the top five I was thinking about all day. What I mean by that is I wrote them down within whatever the time. But, all right. Uh, yeah. Uh, I you want to go? Do you want to go? Oh, I can go first. Go first. What's your number five? Okay, first of all, one of these you'll for sure get. So... Just what do you mean thou for that. sure get? Like you'll you'll watch know Star Wars. Like I... No, no, no. One of them I'm saying <laughs> you'll for sure be like, oh, duh, that's on Andrew's list. Okay. That, I just wanted to say that now because okay. I think it's fun and you, you'll forget, but whatever. Lucy, what's up? It's in the chat. What's up, Lucy? All right. Uh, okay. My number one. Or no, number five, not five. number one. I mean, okay. Sorry. <laughs> yes. It's so weird. <laughs> like, okay, hold on. My, my bottom one, my number five. It was hard for me to put this as my bottom one, but I did anyways. The mall fight. Which that, one? <laughs> the ending fight. Oh, the Rebels? Samurai. Yes. Rebels, and, okay. and more, more of like the the holding conversation part, not, not the fight itself. The moment between him and Maul, and Maul said, is he the chosen one? And he said yes. That moment... Tearjerker. It was a tearjerker. Empathize with Maul. Yeah, you empathize with Maul. You also you feel for him, and you you want to. You, he's automatic. Like in that moment, he becomes good. Almost, it's a really powerful moment. I feel like with those two characters. So, and om- and at the same time, even Kenobi has sympathy for him too. You feel like like there's something there. So. I, I love that moment, and I think as much as people did hate that scene. Who hated that scene? I think so many people hated that what? scene. What? I think oh, a lot yeah, of people dude. were... When it, when it first ex- came out. I think a lot of people were expecting a, a crazy fight. Correct. That's but... what I mean. That's what I mean by people hating that scene. Not not in, in the grand scheme of all of it, people love it now. But in that moment when it first dropped, so it got so much hate because it was so quick. There was like nothing to it, blah 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 blah. But the development between Maul and to this point was so good, and it it needed to happen that way. I think, and I think Dave Filoni actually, in in hindsight, it would have been dope to have a cool fighting scene like we did in this last show of him and Maul. But also, we would prefer that live action, anyways. So because it was an animated scene, I think this is the best way to go about it. So. That is my number five. All right, cool. So my number five. So a lot of my list was all like dramatic, intense stuff and very meaningful things. But I, so I wanted to like come up with something that was more fun and lighthearted of a moment. So my number five is when, when Anakin and Padme have been captured and they bring them into the arena where uh, Obi Wan's tied up. And oh, really? In our, well, let me know the specific part though. Okay. When like Obi Wan is like, 
I told you to stay, not come for me to stay away and blah, blah, blah. And Anakin's like, well, we came to try and rescue you. And then my favorite, well, my number five is, is what Obi-Wan says. He's like, mm-hmm. good job. Like, <laughs> I, it's, yeah, it's so that's, funny. No, that's, that's a good part. I love that. Cause scene. he's, cause like you can go on YouTube <clears throat> and you can see like compilations of like Obi-Wan's like being a troll master of this, like mm-hmm. him lines and stuff like that. And so that's one of my favorite, like, comedic lines from him good job like so sarcastically but mad and they're all about to die type of thing um yeah. and then that whole scene then like when anakin's i think andrew really likes the scene in that scene where padme has climbed up to the top of the pole but anakin didn't realize it and she's like he's like what are we going to do about padme and oh he wants like well she's on the top of things yeah <laughs> she's already on top of the pole. like yeah i don't know this those jokes in that scene are so funny but he, the good job they, one they do pr- as as bad as they wrote the lines for Anakin, they did really good with his lines. <laughs> so yeah, you also have you and McGregor delivering those lines. So the lines aren't always the bad. It's sometimes just how he was directed, how Hayden was directed to act him. Well, but, I mean, he did amazing in this last show. Yeah, he had James Earl Jones do the That's most of the talking. Well, That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's my number five. I had to have one funny comedic line from him. That, so that's fair. Your number four, Drew. My number four is the conversation with him and Vader slash Anakin in the latest episode. That's oh. my number four. Number four. I that moment is really fresh with me, which is why it's on my list. And but the way that moment is in that conversation with him and when he realized that Anakin is actually really dead and it's not actually his fault, Vader killed him. Like, that was such a powerful moment for Obi-Wan because you could see in that moment, I've I've seen it like six times now, and you can see in that moment that he gives up that guilt. Right, because after him, that scene, after he's his happy tears, in a good, yeah. good mood. Yeah, he like gives up that guilt. And I think for his character develop going into four, um, at even like after you watch episode three and you are going to watch episode four, A New Hope, you don't realize that he gave up that guilt. Right. And so now that we have this new development with him as a character, now that he gave up that guilt, I think it brings his character in a different viewing point when you watch A New Hope. And when I watched A New Hope yesterday... Um, I like saw it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it twice this month, so maybe oh, okay. <laughs> it was on. It was on TNT the other night and uh, the other day, and I was at my parents' house. And I was like watching Miles, and I was like, "Oh, let's watch this. This is good and we'll shoot. Well, if it's on, if it's on TV, you know." <laughs> so, but you you view it a lot differently now. His character and a new hope, which is really cool. So I encourage you guys to go watch it, especially after. Go to watch six episode or part six of the Kenobi show, and then go watch episode four. I think it's really cool. Watch Rogue so. One, then episode four. Yeah, but Rogue One is not Kenobi building. Nah, but I'm a just reference saying for you though. I mean, yeah, it's true. So yeah, that is my number four. But it's interesting though that like you talked about like he gave up his guilt in episode six. Mm-hmm. But like I'm trying to remember back into the in Rebels when he's talking with Ezra before Maul shows up. Does because the reason Ezra goes to find Kenobi is to learn how to defeat Vader. So like I I can't remember mm-hmm. if they talked about Vader in that conversation. I don't remember. I have to go back and that, watch, that see what he has to say I need about to watch now too. Yeah, that That's... would be interesting. I feel like I need to watch Rebels. Um, again, again, because like I was going through it again, but I think season one didn't hold hold up the way I wanted it to. Season, yeah, up. season one's a little s- slow. It's a little but once, kidding. But once you get to to season two, it's good. Yeah. So it, I I need to work through it again. Well, um, so you have because I think that would life. be interesting to to see. Yep that part of it as well 
Cool. All right. So my number four is Obi-Wan versus Maul in The Phantom Menace. Oh, okay. So pre-cut or after cut? Like priest, I mean priest stab, I should say. Uh, well, the whole once Qui Gon dies, okay, and he's and it's just one v one against each other. Mm-hmm. I just I think that's still one of the best. Um, cause it's not a it's okay. Yes, it's it's flashy fight, but like it's very um, still fun to watch. Though. But it, it's very how do I say it? like they're very. It's more of a believable fight. Like it's because like a lot of these, some of these fights, it's so acrobatic and trick full of tricks and stuff. But this was very, um, very like you know cut and dry. Like they were how they kind of went back and forth, and it was just very and it was a, a one shot too. So we don't really see a lot of one shots of duels, and so any like long one shot of fighting scenes, like whether it's Star Wars or like a hand to hand combat in like some other movie, like it's always fun to watch one shots. And I always watch, go back and just watch that. Just how it's boom, 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 boom. And it's very like well choreographed. And is that when he like when Obi Wan like kind of like I don't remember if this is after Qui Gon died or before, but he kind of like swipes down on his cross lightsaber. I don't remember, but huh? there's like there's this one move that Obi Wan does in that fight, and it was like super cool as a kid. I remember it. Oh well. All of them, all those yeah. moves in that scene are great, and so, and it's just a good, a great scene because it's you, because when you watch it with, alongside with the stuff that happens in Clone Wars, it's very Obi Wan is very trying to control his anger against Maul and not use mm-hmm. the dark side, and so I still I feel through like those, through those moments, well, like rage because he killed his master kind of master thing. and then later he calls Satine and stuff like that and maul has to like or obi-wan has to keep his anger back back but i feel here in the phantom menace he let his anger oh yeah dude After and died. so i think that's why he beat maul because he uses rage and anger and dark side in a sense like because he was he was heated. He was like he, like before the 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 ray mm-hmm. shield or whatever. Like he's like like bu- jumping up, like ready to go. Like his oh, shoulders yeah. are, and he goes in there swinging like yeah. And so he was very pumped up and very like angry in that moment. Yeah, that that's the thing I'm talking about. Because the first thing he does is and he swings down, and that move looked so cool when he can't comes out of that race seal, he like swings down on Maul's side lightsaber and Maul like even like bends a little bit. Cause it, that impact was so strong. Yeah. Yeah. I still don't know what those shields were doing there anyway, but <laughs> so I, I know there's a, a I know there's a reason for it because it's like they're, they're harvesting like plasma or something from the Earth's Is there core. actually a reason for that? Well, it's a refinery. Like uh, they're ref- oh. taking like plasma or something from the center of the planet. Is it to cool down? I don't know. It's it's it. There's an actual reason, hmm. but you don't get that reason in the movie, and it just it's just an inconvenience. It's just <laughs> an inconvenience. Like oh, you just happen to get trapped behind the last door when your master gets killed, but. Whatever, that fight is always great, and yeah, we thought that was the only time we were going to see Maul, but jo- yeah. George Lucas is like, I don't care, he survived, <laughs> and brought him back in Clone Wars, so yeah, yeah. so that's my, my number four, so Drew, what is your number three? All right, here it goes, my number three is the conversation he has with Leia in the back of that pickup truck thingy. Oh, about about Did you know my were you are you my father? Yes. I, like I recognize your mm-hmm. mother and you. Yeah. When it he a, said I recognize the mother and you and she said are you my father? And he's like no, I wish I could be. Or I wish I was. That's what he yeah. said. Yeah, that was the most that part was the most I cried. 
in Star Wars. And I feel like I would have cried a little in bit all more. all of Star Wars? In all of Star Wars, for sure. Dang, bro. And I think I would have cried a little bit more in that last scene with him and Leia this last episode. But I think because of her reaction and the way she looked at her parents now, she's like, oh, it's okay. It wasn't the same impact that that first one had on me. That first conversation, we kind of knew it was about to come to. It was like a really sad moment. So, yeah. Yeah, I debated that scene too. Because I, I really liked that scene because we, just with the Leia stuff, but then he talks about his memories of his his parents and his baby brother Mm -hmm. and how that fixes the, you know, continuity issue with Leia and talking about her mother in episode six. Cause people are like, how does she remember her mother when Mm -hmm. she was a baby type of thing? And it kind of implies that for sensitive individuals, when they're very, very young, it doesn't matter. They still remember things. They can they can remember like the feelings or like a connection yep. with their family. So, I yeah, that's a really good scene because we learn learn more about the force and how it works and all mm-hmm. that jazz. All right. And there's an Obi two out there somewhere. Obi two. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, I like that moment a lot. So that's my number three. That'd be crazy if we. If if Just, he's so, if he's like. Palpatine? No, he's younger. No, not Palpatine. (laughs) No, like, I don't know. I think it'd be cool if somehow we saw him, like, as a character. I think think it would be dope if he was a villain. We do know. know. Like, he's a Sith Lord. They just, like, when the Jedi Council went to go find him, they're like, oh, we like him a little bit more. He has better hair. And that's why they took Obi Wan and not Obi 2. And Obi 2 is secretly like a Sith villain that we didn't know or, the whole time. Or if, like. What if he's Tarkin? <gasps> okay, that's not how that works. Just <laughs> calm down. But it'd be cool if, if, like, before Palpatine trained Maul, he was training his baby brother to, like, be the new Sith Lord, his apprentice. Oh, jeez. And then he fails, and then he gets replaced by Maul or something. It would be but. cool if he was a bad guy. I think that would be cool. Lucy, make a story about that. That would be a fun Obi, story. Obi-Wan's baby brother, what happened to him? Yes, that's that a, would be a, a cool good fan story. Fiction. That's a cool fan fiction. Make that up. That would be dope. <laughs> All I right. would watch that. All right. Your number so, three. My number three is Obi Wan versus Maul in Rebels, which you oh, okay. already put. So yeah, so I that's one of my favorite scenes in all of Star Wars. The whole like you just talked about the the conversation specifically, mm-hmm. um, but I kind of look at that as like this conversation and the duel and the. Uh, discussion after the duel when he's when Maul is dying Mm -hmm. um i think it's just it's just a great conclusion to their their story which spanned you know what so 13 years plus another 16 i guess over 30 years of them their story and so it was a very, very intense story because it's just like a revenge thing from, from Maul and then he kills Satine and all this stuff. But Obi-Wan still stays true to the Jedi Code and what's morally correct in the Star Wars universe and um, how wise he is talking to Maul and how he's still there to protect Luke. And then I just like how the... The duel was very. We got the callbacks to Qui Gon Jinn's fighting stance, and then how Maul attacks Obi Wan, like to stun him with like a cross check, like he did to stun Qui Gon. But rather than getting stunned, Obi Wan just cuts through it, and it's like he. Mm-hmm. It's whereas Maul didn't learn anything, Obi Wan did learn. 
Like he yeah. learned to counter Maul's attack the way he attacked his master. So, and then how he has compassion at the end to like tell him that Luke is the chosen one. And we see that as everyone is, the everyone's a victim of the Sith. And Maul was just another victim of the Sith and deceived and used and tossed to the side. But I don't know. I love that yeah, scene. It's, good. it's a good scene. Yeah. And if you freeze frame it, there's a slight incline on on Obi Wan's side, like by one degree, so he has the high ground. So Ooh, people have people have, have put the line underneath there and then oh, showed that they have. that that Obi Wan's <clears throat> stance was like one degree above flat. So there you go. That's why it's always it, about the high ground. Speaking of people putting together, I saw this thing the other day. It was yesterday. Um, it was Qui Gon, and then it was or no, it was Anakin telling Qui Gon like, uh, was it Qui Gon, sir? Slow down. So it was like that picture of him saying that, and then the and then it's uh, Qui Gon said duck Anakin, and then it's Anakin standing still saying why, and then it was the end credits of Star Wars. Yeah. That's like the funniest meme I saw in so long. I was like, they, they have so many of those kind of memes where it's like if one little thing changed, oh yeah, everything it's like in this whole game story. Over. But, but I, I thought about that. I was like, that is so funny. That's hilarious to me. Or it's like the the one format where it's Star Wars, and it's like the giant book, and then the little book next to it, Star Wars. If that like something happened else, I'm like, yeah, yeah. If Astromex weren't able to open every door conveniently for you. <laughs> then, like true, every, everyone would be killed. Like in every movie, as much as uh, you hate on um, on Echo, and all he can do is just unlock a door. Yeah, they don't have R two units, so they need <laughs> they need Echo to unlock a door. Oh, gosh. And it is kind of funny that even in the new trailer of the Bad Batch, <laughs> it's still showing him unlock a door. <laughs> That's how he does the whole the whole trailer. The whole scene is just him. It's like I got this one, <laughs> and another door was oh, taken down by Echo. <laughs> oh god! Poor poor Echo. Poor guy. All right, Drew. What is your was it number two now? My number, number two. two. What is it? I have the high ground. That the, the line, the, the line, oh, okay. the line, just the line. I think it's really funny. It's the most memed of all Star Wars memed, and I think it's a good Obi Wan Kenobi moment. Just that line itself. I mean, obviously that whole scene is incredible, and and yeah, and. The, even the ending of that whole scene, yes. In, in a big picture, it obviously should be in my list anyways. But I like that line. I think it was really funny. And it's really good. And you can do a lot with that line. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's probably one of the best memeable things in Star Wars. Yep. It's that one or, you know, the one with Anakin and Padme in the fields. And... <laughs> Anakin says something, and then Padme says, "Oh, da da da, right?" And then it's just like I don't know. It's well, or like the sand gets everywhere. That's a big one too. There's that one, and I don't know. There's like probably the main three Star Wars meme formats, yeah. but you can always. I'm always in the mood for a a high ground meme or joke. True. All right. So that's is that your one funny line? Maybe for your top five, even though it's not really funny, it's, it's kind of sad. <laughs> but yeah, all right, cool. So my number two is when Obi Wan Kenobi goes full God mode in the last episode of the Kenobi show. Ooh, when he goes when Avatar, he, when he Avatar state Avatar. Dude, Kenobi. Even my brother. The first thing Nate Which said one? to me, Nate? Nate. The first thing Nate said to me uh, was on Monday when I dropped off my kid at his house, and he was like, "So when did Obi Wan become the the Avatar state?" I was like, <laughs> "Wow, are you listening to our podcast?" He's like, "What?" I was like, 
just go listen to our <laughs> podcast. I'm not going to explain this. All right. So I yeah. thought it was funny. So I, I really like that whole scene because we talked about in the podcast how when he was buried under the rubble, mm-hmm. like first he was thinking about all the bad things and how yeah. he was getting weak. But then once he remembered his attachment to Luke and Leia and worried about their future, that's when the Force fully returned to him and he was able to break free. Um, and so I forgot to mention this in our breakdown, but um, I, I, I've, I've said it on the podcast before, but I always want to find reasons to like The Last Jedi. I just want to find good. I just want. I have hope for the movie, and so there's the line that everyone kind of hates from Rose when she says, "We're not gonna win by defeating what we hate, but saving who we love." And I feel like that's what Obi Wan did. Why do people hate that line? Because they hate her character and they hate the movie and they think it's a cheesy line. And. Then they kiss, I mean, and it's just there's like there's a lot of other things in that movie to hate. I know, but I'm just saying, one of them. at least this is something that can be yeah. good to look back on. Like, that's what Obi Wan did. He was being overwhelmed with, you know, wanting to fight Vader and Anakin because of the pain and the hurt, and it's almost like he wanted to kill him because of, out of like out of hate, even though it's more out of sorrow, but. What gave him his strength to keep moving was his trying to save Leia and Luke by defeating Vader, which is a different, it's like a nuanced look, but his motivation was trying to save who he loves rather than destroy what he hates. And so that's kind of like, so there's that part of it, of this whole God mode scene, um, but just him going whole all crazy and overpowering Vader and then like always lifting rocks. It's always about lifting rocks and he lifts up and makes the high, makes high ground <laughs> yeah. in this, the whole scene. And then pounding on the chest with the saber oh, and when he could stab him through the chest multiple that, times. And then, then the, like the, you said, the conversation that they had, um, mm-hmm. like that whole thing was just so great. Like I, I knew I needed to have something from the show. I had to pick one thing from the show yeah. that I have in my top five. And that's the pick that I have. So yeah. God mode, I, avatar I, state. I needed that conversation in my, that in my list, but then I also needed the Leia thing in my list. Cause the Leia thing made me cry so much in that first episode three or whatever it was. Like I yeah. had to have that in there too. And, uh, Jerica in this chat said that that was her favorite moment. And that whole movie as well. What Rose said. So favorite moment. Yeah. In The Last Jedi? Or her favorite quote. Oh, favorite quote. Mm, yeah. Interesting. Interesting, Jerica. Yeah. And also, Puzzler, I'm not... You can like it. I'm sorry. That, that is her favorite movie. She's... But but this is not my cup of tea. Cup, speaking of tea... Ooh. Speaking of cups... Cups. Uh, we have a sponsor for today's show. First time ever, Wesley Hanch used coffee and tea. Not really first time. If you've been a long time listener, we've been playing the same commercial for like two years. <laughs> but yes, but you can't go wrong with consistent sponsorship. Consistent. So if you if you like coffee, if you like tea, there's no greater place to get coffee or tea than Wesley Andrews Coffee and Tea. And it also helps us out too. Gives us the true mm-hmm. bucks here and there. So mm-hmm. uh, let's listen to them. Hey everyone, Andrew here. I'm pleased to tell you that the sponsor of today's episode is Wesley Andrews Coffee and Tea. If you don't know anything about Wesley Andrews, you definitely should. They're an award-winning coffee roaster and shop in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and they make fantastic coffee. The awesome thing is that whether you live in the Twin Cities or not, you can get their coffee beans delivered straight to your door by ordering them online. They even have a subscription service that ensures you never run out of amazing coffee. If you've been looking for some new coffee to try or a way to elevate your normal coffee routine, now's your chance. Head over to wesleyandrews.cc, use the code Empire Radio, that's with a capital E and a capital R with no space at checkout, to get 15% off your first purchase of any bags of coffee or a coffee subscription. 
I can't think of a better deal. Get 15% off some great coffee, support a small business, and support your favorite Star Wars podcast. In the words of Emperor Palpatine, do it. Do it. Do it. Also, shout out to Will in the Discord. He just purchased some Wesley, and he used the code. So, and I awesome. think Erica did not too long ago as well. And so, shout out to them. Make sure you guys just do it. Get some yeah, good coffee. Yeah, yeah. And your boy Drew is the one who roasts that coffee. So true. So he's and a lot of times I package it, which I didn't realize Jerica ordered, and I apologize that I didn't recognize your name but but will <laughs> we're putting some extra love in there for you this week so put a little a little toy in his bag like a little i don't know about that much love <laughs> <laughs> maybe i'll give him like this little tiny sticker i have on my desk no i'm just kidding i if what? i had i thought we used to do you have the Mandalorian stickers anymore? We used to yeah you don't have any more the ogs i, I, I have mine order. sitting on my table right over here I could auction it off. True. You could. Who who wants a a Mandalorian podcast Podcast. sticker? We we used to put those in our orders. I used to, when people would order, I would throw that in there. Yeah. For people. But we need to get what's, we need to get Empire Radio stickers. If someone wants a cool. Merch site. That's what we need. (laughs) Well, that too. But if someone wants to design a cool new design of our stuff for a sticker. Something um, that won't be. Something that won't by... be it looks like Star Wars, but it's not Star Wars and it won't get flagged. Um someone, someone makes a, just a Star Trek logo for us. <laughs> someone should make you and me as a cartoon character of Star Wars somehow. Like but th- us as a cartoon, but also like either as like a Gamorrean guard or something. Wait, you're the Gamorrean guard, not me. <laughs> okay, fine. Who are, or like who Thrawn. would we be? Like who would we be like in Star Wars? Our, like our we had to like be our Empire look people. We have to be part of the Empire. I don't know. I should just get I could be mutton, Tarkin. No, I should get mutton chops and just it? be callous. Ooh. I Ooh, can see that. Speaking of callous, someone suggested that uh chris evans oh because they I take could... his what he looks like in uh infinity war yep. with his facial hair i saw like, that actually i think yeah just give him mutton chops and he long, goes out his hair agent callus right there that'd be a good cast but honestly just a cartoon version of us in empire garb holy mics Something like that. Something like that. You guys get on it. But anyways, our number so one. Before we get to number ones, we should do oh, some, some honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. Okay. Um, I have one written down, actually. Okay. Which, I mean, come on. You got to give me some props. I even have an honorable mention written wow, down, Jeremiah. Good job. Oh, here, here, wait. I'll, I'll, I'll do this for you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I asked. That's all I asked there for. There you go. Um, so, yeah. The one I have written down is "Hello There." Which one? The um, General Kenobi one. Okay. The... Benj- the Sith. All right. Yes, not the new one, but that was a good one too, with Luke. Yeah. But I almost had that too as like, like all three of them as like one moment. But mm. um, other than I mentions I have. Oop! I just dropped my pen. Um. Maul, Savage, and Kenobi fight when those three are when Kenobi's fighting Maul and Savage by himself and using two sabers. That's a really good fight. I go back and watch that one all the time. Um, I would say like some stuff from A New Hope. Like these are not the droids you're looking for. When we first, that's like the first time we see the Force used the is mind a trick, Jedi yeah. mind trick. True. And so there's that. The Death um, Sticks one, that's a good one. Ooh, yep. That's a fun scene. That's a good scene. That's, that's a classic Kenobi use of the mind trick. There's that. Um, Him teaching Luke on Dagobah when he doesn't want to learn from Yoda. 
And he's like contemplating that whole thing, and they're walking. That's a good. Or the, and then it's um. In Return of the Jedi, when he's tells just a certain point of view thing, mm-hmm. which technically that certain point of view is Vader's point of view because he literally says that I killed Anakin, and so that whole scene yeah. now makes more sense because it's. Mm-hmm. Literally, what Vader told him. I'm telling you, for all those haters out there that think this show ruined Star Wars, it made it better. Made it better. It makes so much more sense and clear. Like, Mm -hmm. I I heard that about how it's literally what Vader told Obi Wan Kenobi that Vader killed Anakin. Mm -hmm. The certain point of view is Vader's point of view, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Also. Use the force, is. Luke. Use the force when he's oh true trench run. Big moment, that's, big, that's big the trench. Moment. That's a big moment. Do you think that now? Okay, so I have one wish. I wish one they would go back and all those new edits that they did on those three movies, they would either get rid of them and put it the original way that those movies were shot, or they would actually just enhance it and make it look even better. Because the technology right. is way yeah, better now. Yeah, dude, some of the, like, the stuff on Bespin... Some of it is so bad, bro. The Bespin stuff is just so bad. I like... like I literally used to watch the old version because that, I liked it better. Is that... So those editions were in 97? Is that what it was? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was yeah, like... because I remember I, I watched them in theaters. Yeah, like, so that... Uh, it's just... The, like, the... Some of like the creatures look fine. Some of them, but, but when they're just like flying over like the Dune Sea or flying through Bespin, yeah. like it's just mm-hmm. so terrible. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like, so, like, I wish they would either redo them or just let us have both options on Disney Plus and we can watch the original version. That'd be dope. Um, with that though, if they redid them and made them look nicer, they should add Qui Gon at the end of that. Scene. No, they need to get rid of Hayden Christensen and put the other actor. Well, that too. They didn't put him back. But also, let's get quite like There's too, people though. who who watch Star Wars for the first time, and they mm-hmm. start with the original trilogy. They yeah. see that scene, like, who's that random guy standing next to you? That, like, it makes it doesn't make sense, but... Well, that too. But the whole point is that he interacts with... He, he becomes one with the Force at the end of that scene once he... Right, but why don't we get Qui Gon? Because Qui Gon is definitely gonna help Luke at some point training. I don't know. Maybe we don't know. <laughs> Wasn't there a lot of people saying that Qui Gon couldn't be a Force Ghost too? Yes. So based on Clone Wars, it doesn't make sense why that's true, or that why that happened in the Kenobi series. But then they said. In a book or a comic, it explains that he was able to learn more about his consciousness and projection after his he died. Oh, so, okay. Like, the whole Force Ghost thing in Star Wars makes no sense. There's no logic to any of it. It's just Have random. you seen the... Um those clips of this version but for uh the chinese audience what no. that there's no force ghost in kenobi yeah is this his voice why is it a cultural thing like ghost yeah yeah things are not good to see i don't i don't even think it's actually for china i think it's for a different country because I don't think China has Disney Plus. Could be wrong. I don't know. I'll but someone was up. someone was talking about that. How it's a different version, which is the ver a reason why I guess there isn't any Force Ghosts in that last scene of Episode Nine. Rise of Skywalker is why she hears that and not visually sees all this because. China wouldn't have let them. There, there is that rumor that all those <clears throat> actors were supposed they were filmed, yeah, in costume, and they were supposed to show up. Like that's the rumor. It's not confirmed. Yeah, 
but it's I don't know. Money, that's, man. That's that's a whole nother That's podcast. another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we've probably already covered all that stuff anyway but yeah we've probably it's been 150 that. episodes we, i can't remember any of the stuff we talked about we talked so so many different things 150 and that's not even including the clone wars save podcast and the mandalorian podcast so we're probably at like is at, 175 wait, have you seen i shared that meme did you see that what it's like mandalorian season one and two eight episodes oh uh, yeah <laughs> and it's like well, R2, we're supposed to be going up. <laughs> yeah, but then Andor's 12. So True. Yeah, it's whatever. a joke, Jeremiah. I know. <laughs> All right, they, any more they honorable to mentions? They, they listen to them. They go up. Any uh, more honorable mentions, Drew? No, never, no I, I think I'm good. Oh, right. wait, I do have oh, one. The oh. el- now that I think about it, the elevator scene of him and Anakin, and Anakin's all sweaty and nervous. And he talks Anakin down in episode two. I think that's a good scene. It's a wise scene from. Oh, and that when he finds out that the baby is Anakin. Oh, that's a good moment. Or a not, that's, scene. Since, since you oh, mentioned man. that in Clone Wars season seven, when Anakin's having a secret video call with Padme, mm-hmm. and and he knows, so he's trying to like get in there, but Rex isn't letting him in, and then when. Anakin leaves. He's like, "Well, I hope you told Padme I said hello." Like that scene was a very like. Dang, he knows. He knows something's going he on. Knows. That's a that's a good scene. Yeah, like outside of the Ahsoka and stories, Anakin, like that's the probably Anakin's like the best. Face blushed like like, and he kind of like smirked back like, "Okay, whatever type of thing." But that yeah, that scene is very. Yeah, intense. That he kind of he kind of knew, and he didn't intervene when he could have. Mm-hmm. Well, Jeremiah, you did not mention in your honorable mention my last scene, my favorite Obi Wan interaction of all time. Oh, this better not be. <laughs> I bet you you know what it is. Oh, <laughs> it's not at a certain place where you go eat food, is it? It is. Oh no! <laughs> Go ahead, tell uh, us your number one. My number one. Oh god! It's his interaction with Dex. Oh, Obi Wan. Are you that kidding is, me? That is my favorite of all time. Oh Obi-Wan gosh! I... <clears throat> my favorite Obi Wan moment. That is by, by sure Dex. That whole. It's my favorite, and you guys know this. That's why I said you knew that you knew this was. Oh, that is dang it! That's Obi Wan. <laughs> that's like my favorite thing. Yeah, so mm-hmm. that's can't my... believe that's your number one. How can you not believe that? Every everyone in the chat's like saying, "Oh, we like they knew the chat knew." <laughs> well, that's a very stark contrast between what well, mine. Number one is. Oh, well, probably. So any other final thoughts on your number one, or is that is that it? I mean, if you guys know me, you know that has been my, like, number one for ever. Like, I always mention that. You do always bring so. it up, but top five? Oh, okay. Okay. So top five, my number one. It All wouldn't right. be me. I mean, my top five moments of Star Wars was when Luke went inside the Tauntaun. Oh, yeah. I forgot I mean, about that. On. I'm consistent. I'm pretty consistent here. You're very, very lukewarm with your number one. <laughs> <laughs> or very memorable. Uh, okay. Yeah, even All the right. chat's like, come on, Jeremiah. Like, the chat knows. The chat Not, knows. Okay, fine. Let's get to my number one. Yes, let's go. What do you think my number one is? Dude, I have no idea. No guess. Did I mention it? It has been something discussed tonight. Ooh. Any ideas? I have the high ground. It's that whole scene, the high the ground scene. scene. Not not the line, even though the line's important. But once he yeah. jumps on to the the, the floating the, things, the shore, oh, like okay. when he gets the high ground. Like 
that whole that, thing. Like that whole you're thing the chosen start... one, Anakin. Yeah, that whole thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have the high ground. Don't try it. You underestimate my power. Don't try it. And then he cuts his legs off, his like his last arm, and then the whole monologue basically. And it's the saddest, one of the saddest things in all of Star Wars. Very emotional. I think that's Ewan McGregor's best acting in Star Wars. Like that scene is, mm-hmm. he's yelling and crying and screaming and I hate you and like venting and like yeah, you were the chosen one. You were supposed. It was said you destroyed us. Sith, not join them. Like that whole thing is like the whole fight leading up to that scene is. You know, I think it's in my top five moments of all time. And so, yep. like, it makes sense why this is in my top five for Kenobi specifically. But, like, I'll go back and watch that whole fight scene. And then, you know, yes, we the whole high ground memes, like, it gets people kind of forget about the emotion of that whole scene because of the meme. But mm-hmm. I haven't forgotten it. It's so that is my number one. It's a good one. Obi Wan Kenobi moment in Star Wars. That's a good one. It's not as good as mine, but it's a good one. Oh, okay. <laughs> there, there's uh, Lucy. There's I mean, another. Uh, there's another fan fiction for list. you. Do the Dax uh, origin story. Or... Oh please, just please do that. That would be amazing. I'd be so happy. I want to buy a Dax shirt with him like this, like like giving a hug. You should get. Or you like, get, and then the back of his shirt would be him like grabbing. No, what you should do <laughs> is get get a shirt made where mm. there's two arms going out and they're connected oh to your gosh. hands with with string. So it's like you using the four arms and you can give people hugs with. Dude, that would be the best cosplay of all time, dude. <laughs> then you gotta have really loose baggy pants that you have to yeah, like pull up. Dude, that's why I say the back of the shirt could be like him reaching to pick up his uh, pants. <laughs> the crack that'd be hilarious dude should that, should that be a, a merch shirt that we get that, <laughs> that'd be sick and you could just do oh dude you could do that and night you could just make a character like that looks like him as a cartoon and then just have the the head cut off so it'd be like who's ever wearing it is the head of the body we wouldn't get in trouble for that chat please artists in the chat or in in the in universe the, out there, the please universe. make us a shirt for that. We would even give you some profit off that shirt, but that would oh, be wait. a dope shirt. Oh, uh, Will brought it up in the uh, Discord that I owe you a quarter because. Oh heck yeah! <laughs> because the Grand, because I said I bet you a quarter that the Grand Inquisitor died, and it's oh. a different one in Rebels, so I owe you a quarter. Thanks, supposedly. Will. Thanks, Will. It was funny because I was like, there's no audio or video evidence of me making this bet. And then they go find the episode. Here's the timestamp right here. <laughs> right there. <laughs> so I think I got two quarters off this. That I was pretty good for this show. Let's see how I do in the, in the next one. All right. Well, those are our top fives for Obi-Wan Kenobi. And who knows? We don't know if we're going to see any more Obi-Wan Kenobi ever again in a show or in a movie or anything. So like yeah. maybe if that unless something else comes up, maybe this list would change. I don't know, but we're probably not going to get any more Ewan McGregor. Unless, unless yeah. we get like a, a show, like an animated show of when of pre episode one stuff, but true. Who knows? All right. Well, that's the end of the main segment of the episode, so we might as well just transition over to everyone's favorite part of the show, voicemails. It's voicemail time. I really want this shirt right now. I know. I can, do. like, picture, like, please, please, someone design that shirt for us. Lucy, All we, right. Lucy left and she just came back. But Lucy, we had two good story ideas. One of them was the Dex and Obi Wan, the origin story of Dex. That would be really good. You should make a story of that. What was the other one? I forgot. Oh, um, Obi Wan's baby brother. What happened to him? Yes, we said cool. that he, 
We said, said that he was, he was like a Sith or he went to the dark that, side. But... That he was Palpatine's apprentice before Maul and then mm-hmm. didn't fail them. But... So yeah, Lucy, All right. new stories for you. So we have seven voicemails tonight. So first three are from Will and he made some new friends recently. So let's Ooh. listen to these. Hey, Empire Radio. Will here. Uh, I guess this calls for introduction. So, oh, go I know ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Uh, as you may have seen in the Discord, I made a new droid, mm-hmm. which uh, his name plays on Smooth. <laughs> So, I'm honored. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to tell you a little bit about himself. Oh. You're kind of embarrassing me. You're you're supposed to be saying like where you where you're from. No. Well. All right. <laughs> That's the end of that first one from Will. But he has more people or friends to uh, introduce us to. So let's listen to number two. Hey, Empire Radio. Will here. Uh, so my new droid is kind of a bit shy, I guess. But uh, maybe this one will have more of a, a vocal opinion. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. <laughs> Here's Chopper. Dang it, I want okay. a Chopper so let's, bad. Let's, 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 let's tone it down a bit. They they just met you. Okay. There's there's no need. I I gave you a home, like. Oh oh well, excuse me, for putting you next to all these other droids. You know what? I've had enough of you. I'm turning you off for now. Ugh. All that's right, you got thing with Chopper. Yeah, Chopper. Interesting. So, that's a that's a fun spoiler Chopper. alert. But that's my. I think that was my number one droid. Yeah. In our top five. So maybe one day Jake and I will go to Galaxy's Edge and get a Chopper. No, I won't. Sorry. Oh well, we tried, <laughs> chat. And so we have a third one from Will, and I don't remember what it is, so we're just going to listen to okay. it. <laughs> hey, Empire Radio, Will here. Uh, I was just briefing my droids on what was what was happening. So everybody, uh, we have a new droidsmith. Oh, of course, you'd have a problem with it. But everybody... Meet a familiar face. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, I, I, I guess my droids are already giving him a hard time. Of course, you're the one giving him the hardest time. But tell us your name. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Babu Frick. All right. So Babu Frick. With all those droids that he has now, he needs a droid smith to take care of him. So, yes. That's right. Babu Frick is a good addition to your droid family, I should say. So Don't you still have my Babu Frick? I do. And your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so those are thanks, Will, for those three voicemails. Um, next two are from Jedi Master. One is a dad joke. The other one is not. I think the first one is not a dad joke. So let's listen oh. to the first one. Hello, Empire Radio. It's Jedi Master here. With another uh, oh, might no, I say funny I was wrong. joke. The other way around. Hope you enjoy. I ordered a chicken and an egg online. I'll let you know. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll let you know. <coughs> Don't worry. I mean, so one, one will get here before the other, and uh, we'll be the first to know it next week. Uh, yeah. May the force be with you. <laughs> Always. <laughs> I'm using that one. I am using that joke. That is that a, is, that's a Jay Master, one. I think that, that has to be your last one because all your jokes are going to go downhill from there. So that's, that's a, a good that, one. That's a good. You should actually do that. Order a chicken and order an egg online. Let's see which one comes like, first. Like vlog it up. Like make a video oh. of it. Jeremiah, go ahead. No, I'm not going to spend money on that. I don't want to. A, a, chick, a chicken what? arrives in my apartment. I just told kill you it that. after it comes. Like, like a kick, like, it just had to be alive. Okay, it doesn't have to be alive. I can't kill. You work a at chicken. a meat factory. We don't. Do we don't kill mean? animals there. I. I've never taken <laughs> a life of this? an animal. Well, I, actually, that's not true. I accidentally killed a mouse once, and I felt bad. But he had it coming. I, I'll let a mouse trap kill a mouse. I, that's or your wrong place at the wrong on one time. And letting but I I don't think I've ever killed an animal other than like a bug. So like I did your snake ever kill? Yeah, live I ones. Thought, that's all you ate was. Were they alive? I thought they were always yeah. frozen. No. So you killed one by letting I don't, the snake. That's that's just nature. That's just <laughs> let nature. The it's mouse always, is the wrong place at the wrong a time. Chicken, it's nature. <laughs> I just haven't. I I couldn't kill a chicken. Sorry. But you could be like friends. You can have get a chicken and a duck. What if the egg becomes a duck, and then you'll have a chicken and a duck in your apartment? That's then I'll get kicked out of my apartment. It's against policy. <laughs> You can oh. have dogs and you have can have cats. That's it. Yeah, I know because you had to get rid of your even snake though, there. Even though, bro, you you definitely could have had your snake, bro. Even though one day I saw this cage out like on like a first floor, like the mm-hmm. a patio of the patio first floor thing? somewhere on one of the buildings, and this kid is playing with a rabbit. He has a you pet def- rabbit. You definitely could have had your. I'm just saying, like. If Your someone snake. from management walked by and saw this rabbit, this kid would have to get rid of his pet rabbit. Or they just don't I, I almost wanted to like walk into the office, leasing office, and say, hey, someone's violating policy. But I was that Jeremiah. Would, that would have been mean. If I can't have my mean. snake, he can't have his his brown one these, bunny. One of these days I'll just buy you a snake. And a whole thing, but oh, it just showed up at your front door. You had to take care no, of it. No, I don't I don't want that anymore. I'm I'm over it. But what if it was the same one? What if I was able to find him? He didn't get adopted yet. That's not how that works. You know what's sad is I, I could have him now. You could. But. but now you have a dog and True. a kid. Yeah. All right. And your best so friends. That was Jedi Master's dad joke for the week. And here is his other one, which is not a dad joke. So let's take a listen. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. <coughs> Hello there. Missy, say hi. Hello there. Hello there. <coughs> Hello there. <coughs> Hello there. Hello. 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 Hello there, hello there, hello, hello, hello there. Hello there, General there. Kenobi. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. Okay, thanks, this is Jedi Master, for all the, like, impressions. Are they supposed to be, like, different impressions of people saying different hello? Tone. Different hello there. So, so I, I don't know, but <laughs> that was a, I was listening to this before. This, like, I always listen to him, I'm like, what is going on here? He's just... Is it glitched? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jay Master. So we got two more. Next one is from Jerrica. Hello, Empire Radio. Um, this is Jerrica popping in with favorite Kenobi moment. Um, I honestly took three days to figure this out, and it is 519, so hopefully this makes it in. 
But the one that keeps popping in my head is when we finally hear him laugh after he's talking with Leia. It just made me happy. Oh, and yes, I don't one. know, it just keeps popping in my head as my favorite. So let me know what you think and may the force be with you. I like that one. That is a good moment. Because mm-hmm. moments earlier, I'm flooding, floods are flowing out of my eyes. And then he starts laughing and then it mm-hmm. gives me a smile. So yes, Jerrica, that is a great scene. And yep. I should have had it as an honorable mention. Yeah, me too. Now that taking it. Yeah, that's a good one. I like it. All right. Last voicemail is from Retta. So let's take a listen. No hey, Empire Radio. This is Retta from the Discord. Um, just wanting to weigh in on some of my favorite Kenobi moments. Um, I think one of the most hilarious points is in Attack of the Clones when he and Anakin are literally like on a mission and he just goes up to the bar and just starts taking shots. Um, You know, it just is humorous to me. Um, I also love the moment when he and Anakin um, are taken in by Hondo and Rufin and (laughs) wake up tied to Count Dooku. That entire (laughs) sequence is just hilarious. Um, On a more serious note, I think one of my favorite, like, hardcore moments is at the end of Clone Wars Season 4 when he's taking on Savage and Maul. Um and dual wielding lightsabers and it's just really cool so yeah i'm excited to hear the discussion thanks those are good ones it made yes. me think of you know what's also a good one that i didn't mention i forgot what because i didn't write it down but the the um fight in the beginning of episode three when him and anakin are gonna fight dooku. count dooku and uh he says Anakin, and then Anakin's like, "Don't worry, we'll t- do it together this time." Like, oh yeah, <laughs> like he was going to say it, but then like Anakin caught it. Like, yes, yes, let's do it together. That's a good moment. <clears throat> it's just lords are a specialty, and every single mm-hmm. time they lose, like, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, all right. Thank you, Reda, for those. Yes. So the episode of Clone Wars when they get captured by Hondo and get tied tethered to Dooku which is this yeah like I don't know I felt like I would have just I, I can't kill a chicken but I probably would have tried to kill Dooku somehow and that's <laughs> <laughs> with their chains yeah choke them out all right so that's the end of all our voicemails and that's the end of our top five so this is a quick episode you know our top fives go pretty quick these days now that we are just two of us and Andrew's not adding his true list but yeah so we can just talk about our socials and we can get out of here so if you've been a fan for a while and you've listened to the end you've heard heard the spiel every time but if you're new and you want to get connected to us outside of just listening you can go into the description below of wherever you're listening and there should be a link uh to to our landing page links.co slash empire radio links with two eyes and there you can get everything from Instagram, Facebook, uh, a link for our Discord, uh, YouTube, um, a link to neilusinerdy.com, which is a podcast network we're part of. There's a fan email address in there that if you just want to email us anything, you can email us there. Um, and also, uh, if you are new, we had a fun voicemail fan fiction that we did a couple months back. Uh, and we're trying to get it illustrated to have a fun fan fiction illustration on our YouTube channel from those voicemails. And there's a link in there to a Google Doc with a whole description of everything, all the voicemails, timestamps, and everything. So if you're an artist and you can draw, paint, sculpt, build sets, if you can do digital art, whatever, uh, we'd love for you to send in your artwork illustrating these voicemails. So. We haven't gotten any for a long time. I'm kind of sad. I thought maybe we could be done with this project by now, but we need more people. If you do any of this, do it. It's fun. You'll get a shout out on if you want a social media shout out, whatever in the video, we'll definitely do that. Um, but it's a great and fun story and we need the fans to illustrate it because it's worth it. So in the chat, all of them are like, Oh shoot, I need to work on that. So yes, yep. get on it. And also if you guys want to design that, uh, Dex t-shirt that we talked about you can do that also people are saying in the chat that you and me are 
Obi Wan and Hondo. And I'm Obi Wan. Just... <laughs> I'm Obi Wan. <laughs> I wrote in the chat too. I was like, "Who is who?" And everyone's like, "Come on, Drew." <laughs> You're on though. So I guess hey, I'm freaking hey. on though knockout. H- Hondo is cool though. I almost had him in my top five characters of I all mean, time. I so do have a Hondo like right here. But like I can watch. kind of funny. I have a what? Hondo and an Obi-Wan looking right at each other on my Clone Wars shelf. So we need to get some Hondo action in uh Bad. We need Batch. some Hondo live action. Andor? Ooh. We could see him in Andor. Doing a smuggling something or whatever, or I mean the Mandalorian could be. Why That'd not? be fun. We're getting Babu Frick in the Mandalorian, so why not Hondo? Like, it's definitely. Also, oh, have you spoiled yourself on those trailers from the leak, the bootleg the ones? Yeah, yeah. You, you would. <laughs> no, I haven't. I just saw like a clip of one, and I was like, oh, I, I saw this. I saw the Mandalorian one, and I saw the the Jedi Tales one. Oh, I saw the Jedi Tales one. So yeah, and and the I Mandalorian saw... one clips of it look so dark. But you, you said you haven't seen it. I saw a clip, and then I turned it off. But the clip oh. I saw was like super dark. I just don't understand how they have that much stuff already made, though, because like. Production started like, like when did it end? Like, I don't remember. Production from season th- I don't January. Know. I don't remember, but I'm just surprised that they They're had done that. with it. They're just sitting on it. I think we're gonna get it at the end of this well, year. Huh? Aren't we getting it in December? No, we're getting it in February, I believe. Oh, February, March, 2023. So they gotta take. A year to edit it and stuff so I'm, I'm expecting maybe it's just that much more i, I wonder if uh lucy saw that. that what the oh, trailer. The, she in the chat still yeah lucy have you been did you go to the mandalorian did you, did you watch the panel learn i would definitely bet the i would be the first in line at that panel if i was at star celebration i'll tell you that yeah so i'm thinking that because it's well one they had a delay in production just because Pedro Pascal was doing the Last of Us live action series for HBO, so that's why there was a delay because he had to shoot another show. But mm-hmm. you know, with this long process of post production, seems like it's longer than the other sh- stuff. So yeah, I don't know. I'm I ex- think it might ex- be because they also jumped into the Soka show. Maybe, but I'm thinking that season three maybe just be is this that more? Oh, she did not go to the Mandalorian one. It must be just, just that much more bigger of ambitious of CGI and battles and fights and True. stuff where they need more time to create. Did you, speaking all this of stuff. that, and we can go back. To, we're going back to Kenobi real quick. Did you know that that um, that scene wasn't in the 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 flashback of Order sixty six wasn't actually filmed in the um, whatever that room is called the volume. Yeah. The opening that? scene? Yeah. No, I didn't. No. Because have you seen the clip of the the um Jedi? Oh, well, I've seen that. But yeah. But no, that's just them um, filming. You think they're just filming that part and placing it in? Yeah, because you it? can't. There's no way they could have that bridge where all the kids are running, and then they have someone f- 400 feet away in the same volume. So. That's I don't think it's in the volume. Well, the giant set. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I don't think it was filmed in the volume, though. No, it was f- filmed in the volume, but they still have to put stuff in the animation on the screen that is there. Oh, so they just filmed those certain spots and then placed it in the volumes part for them the yeah. walk the bridge scene. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense now. Yeah. But yeah, some of those leaked behind the scenes stuff, like the vader reva scene where it's mm-hmm. it's not cut up it's just like straight them doing it yeah it's a long it's, it looks a lot cooler so yeah there's a lot of cool stuff go check it i cannot wait dude for that recap of the show the, the disney gallery dude, it's gonna be dope 
prepare for that podcast episode and hopefully it's not like the Boba Fett one it's one episode I don't think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be at least two they're gonna probably drop that during like when we're doing three episodes a week with Andor Bad Batch and Jedi Tales <laughs> they're gonna drop that then no, we have so much stuff this fall nothing. or maybe they'll release it before Andor comes out like the end of August yeah you guys buckle but, up Anyway, we're wild ride. we're rambling now, so we might sure. as well just yes. cut this off. Anything else, Drew? Nope, that do, should be it for me. Now we kept it a secret. I don't know what our next episode is. Should we, do we want to say it now, or do we want to say it's going to be a surprise? Episode? Yeah, in two weeks. Let's just see? tell them. Should we just tell them? Just what next week? Not not the whole the whole one that, thing. The whole okay. Discord. So if you want to know all of it, go to Discord. Yeah. The chat so, may have spoiled it to some people in the chat tonight. D- did they? Yes. Just okay. So, because she's on the Discord. But. So, on uh, the 12th, is that what it is? <laughs> Bro, yes. July 12th, we will be interviewing Lucy on the Whoa. podcast. So, we're excited for that. We got in contact yes. with her. And so, she's going to be on the show. And we're very excited. So we're excited to have our first fan on the show, and also we're a fan of her of her podcast. So it's a really cool opportunity to talk about both of our Star Wars podcasts. And I have known I'm going to coin this uh, new segment of interviews, mm-hmm. Imperial Interviews. That's going to be Imperial Interview Number One. How about Imperial Interrogation? I'll yeah, that's better. I'll think, <laughs> that's uh, better. Uh, uh, <laughs> Dude, come on. Just, well, come on, when people on. read the description, they need to see that it's an interview, not like. Well, we will say that in the description. Imperial but, interrogation. It says Lucy, and like we're interrogating a yes. girl. Like, all right, okay. well, we'll have the the Discord vote. Oh, but that. No, we're not. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. All I right, like so, yes. that. so tune in for that for the live stream, or if you're just listening, that's or on YouTube or whatever. Look forward to that because we're excited for that interview because Lucy's <laughs> the real MVP, <laughs> better Lucy, than us. Lucy too. wrote in the chat, she said, Jeremiah, pause for a sec. <laughs> what? <laughs> you paused when I said that. Oh, okay. Anyway, all right. Anything else, Drew? As you're drinking nope. your Gatorade? Nope. All right. Well, you've been listening to hopefully not our last Kenobi Tastic episode of Empire Radio. I'm Jeremiah. I'm Drew. And may the Force be with you. Always.